Let's take a look at some DeFi charts for Brave New Coin on this Wednesday. And the DeFi perp, which is a index and index of several different DeFi constituents, Ave being 11%, Wi-Fi being 11%, Sushi Uni, Maker, all the good stuff's in there. This is actually deceptively much more bullish than uh, most of the individual charts I'm about to show. This not only had a uh, bull div over the past few days, but it bounced on the previous range. It's still at risk of dipping into the cloud, retesting VPVR, retesting the 200, retesting the bottom end of the cloud here at 10.3. You have a bearish TK cross here. You have a potential macro head and shoulders as well. So a lot of mixed signals here. It's certainly much more bullish on this than most of the charts I'm about to show you based on technicals. Now the fundamentals, we can look at DEX volume on a monthly basis. It's second highest month ever in November. We can look at PE ratios. We can look at on-chain stats. We can look at all this other stuff. Doesn't seem to matter at all. Hasn't really moved the needle in any way, shape, or form. Curve, one of the best performing DeFi coins lately, on ETH anyway, not excluding Luna and Solana and DOT, has probably done well because of reduction in supply or, or rewards and or increased lockup, whatever combination has happened. That seems to be the biggest influencing factor, along with, I assume, ETH gas fees, which continue to stay high or rise. If we look at Maker, this is one of the few that is on the bullish side of neutral. It's still above the 200 here. It is still above the VPVR level at 25. This is just telling you where all the volume is on the chart dating back since January. And if we break that level, this is how this works in general, but if we break that level to the downside, then that's typically extremely bearish. We sort of bounced where we needed to bounce. We were building this odd looking head and shoulders inside of a head and shoulders. It didn't look good. You know, it needed, it, it was a bounce or die situation here at 23. And it did in fact bounce. So now it's sitting above the cloud-ish, above the 200 definitely. And most charts do not look like this. Most charts look like comp. Uh, below the 200, below the cloud, below the VPVR. That is not bullish. And there's no bull div here. This might bounce to 500 tomorrow, but as it sits here based on trend, this is not something that you can expect higher highs from anytime soon, especially with this large VPVR resistance profile from 350 to 500, the resistance at 320, the 200, the cloud, all of that's resistance now. This thing just has been unable to do anything, probably because the rewards are too good. The liquidity incentives or the liquidity mining rewards, however you wanna think about that, aren't helping, we'll put it like that. Uh, Ave also just lingering here below the 200, below the cloud. There isn't a bullish expectation for this. You know, it needs to be, it needs to look like this. It needs to look like November. It needs to look like March, April, uh, when it was above the cloud, above the 200. This is leaning more and more into the bearish territory. And yes, this could have a ultra late cycle rotation trade where it's literally a day or two of a 3x and then just instantly rips lower. I mean, that that is so not out of the realm of possibilities. Um, and that is very, very hard to trade correctly uh, because you have to, act, have to act swiftly and you have to be on top of things almost on an hour by hour basis as we go into the end of the year. Because my expectation is just Q1 is not going to be good across the board for everything. Uni also looks like Comp and Ave below the 200, below the club. Not as bearish as comp, still sort of within the range, but it does not sit bullish here. It did have a bull div here on that low, but on trend, it is not very happy right now. Sushi, even less happy than uni, below the 200, below the cloud, sort of hanging on by a thread. Any lower lows in this thing um, likely goes sub five pretty easily, but the swiftness at which it just gave up 11 to seven last week or last couple weeks uh, is kind of breathtaking. It's just not a good signal for buyers here at it whatsoever. You know, there was a notch in the volume profiles that's sort of understandable based on expectations is how you'd read that ahead of time. Uh, so again, on the way up, this thing can easily go back to 11-ish because there's no volume resistance here. But on trend, uh, this definitely leans bearish and here's curve the shining beacon on the hill it, nothing looks like this at all luna maybe but uh it has continued to break out since september broke above 
the 200 in August, broke above the cloud succinctly in October, just a run of the mill range break. And if you measure the previous local high to local low, you get a target of six to seven, basically. And it certainly hit that target over the past week. It still looks fine for trend, still above the VPVR, above the 200, above the cloud. Looks nothing like any other chart in DeFi right now. Bell below the cloud, below the 200, kind of hanging on by the thread here. Anything sub 15, sorry, sub 17. And it's probably good night for a good long while as it gets back into this range. This is even potentially forming a descending triangle here, multi-month descending triangle, which carries a bearish continuation bias. So until it's above the cloud and above the 200, you really can't hope for much. Uh, BNT also has a glimmer of bullishness here. It doesn't really look like everything else. It has a building ascending triangle for multi-month now. It is weaving in and out of the 200, weaving in and around the cloud. So trend metrics aren't going to help you too, too much when things are tight like this and ranging. Um, but the go long signal would be anything above five. Uh, if this starts to drop below the diagonal support like link, then uh, things probably start to get uglier and less bullish, certainly. But uh, as it sits here, it looks fine for potentially moving up, as does ZRX. Fundamentally, this thing matches nothing else. You don't need it for anything. It doesn't need to exist. But on the technical side of things, it looks much better than any of the lending and borrowing platforms, aside from Maker. Looks much better than SNX. Looks much better than Sushi and Uni. Uh, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me based on fundamentals, which is why it's getting harder and harder to take DeFi fundamentals seriously in any way, shape, or form. So this sits above the 200. It's in and out of the cloud. It's got a bearish TK cross currently. But again, as this thing gets tighter and tighter and tighter in a range in any chart, trend metrics become less valuable, more noisy. Uh, so if you're bullish, you don't want to see this break down below that diagonal. And you definitely want to see it hold above a dollar, which is where the 200-day moving average is currently. Uh, here's one inch at the 200 breaking below the cloud, basically retracing all of the gains from September to November. It wicked to like 850 or something. That's long since gone now, and it's risking a range break below 370. There's minor supports volume-wise on the way down, but again, this is not bullish. This is not something you'd expect to have a next have a good next couple months, the next couple weeks. Um, the best thing you could probably hope for is just a ranging mess and that it doesn't break below the 200. Cloud is already telling you this thing's in trouble, even though it does have a pretty large TKC clamp that formed because of that 850 wick in late November. So, you know, this is just, it's not a slam dunk trade for me. It's not anything I want to be holding in this time. SNX, same thing, just continuous lower lows on no bull div, below volume support, below the 200, below the cloud. I wish I could be more bullish on this stuff, but uh, this week especially, things got quite ugly as things just reversed in a big way. MLN below the 200, now below the cloud, broke below that uh, diagonal multi-month support. Almost, uh, it was one year plus at least at that point. So this does not look good either. Below the uh, horizontal support as well at 120. And you definitely don't want to see this thing break uh, 100. Luna looks like nothing else. Again, it's whether or not it's DeFi to you individually is questionable. You know, I don't really see it as DeFi. I can understand why it gets categorized as such, but this thing is up when almost nothing else is today. And just continuously on the daily cloud has bounced on the Kijun over and over and over. It recently got below the Kijun, held above the cloud. Didn't ever really tell you to jump out, but it told you things were looking iffy. And uh, now it is reaching for FIB levels of the previous high and low. So it's doing what you'd expect it to do if the trend was bullish, right? This is a great example of you pick the FIB levels, you pick the high, you pick the low. And if it stays bullish, it doesn't matter how long it takes to get there. This ended up taking two or three months. But the target doesn't really change. As long as you don't make a lower low, as long as you remain above the cloud, above the 200, trend metrics stay bullish, you're good to go. Uh, so this thing looks great. CRO on the 12 hour um, just exploded to a dollar over the past month. And even on the 12 hour, it doesn't look horrible, but I can't imagine wanting to jump into this 
after it was almost up a 10 X in like three weeks. So this thing is going to need some relaxation price wise. And I certainly, I would just wait for this thing to inevitably break down before jumping back into it. And uh, this is LDO against ETH. LDO is the Lido DAO token for ETH 2.0 staking. And uh, against ETH, really historically, all this thing has done is range. And it certainly doesn't look great against ETH. Currently, as of below 200, below the cloud, just a giant mess here. And I don't really think this is anything you pay attention to on the daily. I think you pay attention to it on the monthly in, um, or at least on a monthly basis, not necessarily monthly candlesticks. But in July, August, September, this thing had a kind of triple top, diamond top, head and shoulders mess, right? That it did break down, did below the cl- break below the cloud, did break below the 200. Uh, currently, this could set up to an Adam and Eve, right? And this could set up to something into 2022. You've got your Adam left is what it's called. This V here, and this could make a U over the next several weeks, certainly something to watch for, but it doesn't say, hey, traders sit in this the whole time until this thing potentially forms. Even in uh, March to May, you had this W, uh, almost Eve and Adam, <laughs> U and V, that really didn't go anywhere, at least initially. You know, It took some time to get moving from May to August, but this just doesn't, it isn't a chart that historically has ever done anything in a range, other than range. So it, you can't really expect this thing at least I wouldn't expect this thing to move in a big way. Lastly, I'll just mention the ETH BTC fund and DeFi portfolio. I trade for Techni Capital Enzyme.finance, a non-custodial portfolio management tool where you can send ETH or USDC or just watch what I'm doing. You can see everything, including AUM, performance, allocation, and all the trades I make in the trades tab down below. On the EFI, EFI, on the DeFi side of things, uh, I'll definitely be arranging things um, significantly over the next day or two. So this will look a little different and you'll be able to see all those trades pop up down here. That's all for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.